Hello again. Just having a conversation with a client, and I thought this was a really important topic to, to bring up. And for some, it might push a few buttons, but that just makes one more topic for discussion. And that is one of the core values or core principles of the neurodivergent movement, as I understand it. And this is just based on what I've read about how it was founded and how it's used. And that is the neurodivergent movement, and I see this in some of the smaller movements as well, autism and so on, that profess that the real issue or the real reason behind our suffering is all on society, that society is the problem. And society needs to change in order for us to feel included, welcomed, and all that stuff. Now, I'm not saying society is perfect and spotless and blame-free in this, but the idea that only your environment influences who you are, what you think, how you show up is absolutely absurd. Because the people who embrace this in an all or nothing way, and there are a lot of them, tend to think that I'm perfect. You just need to accept me the way I am. I don't need to do any work on myself whatsoever. I don't need to improve any skills. I don't need to work on my emotional regulation. I don't need to work on my mindset. I just need everyone else to change. And when that happens, I'll be happy. And if you levy the slightest criticism or you do anything I don't like and I melt down on you, it's your fault. I have no responsibility to what I contribute to this interaction. That kind of, well, all or nothing thinking to begin with, but that kind of blame, that kind of disempowerment, putting all of your happiness and your choices for how to respond in someone else's lap. How much power are you giving up? How much of your own capacity are you surrendering for the sake of blame or self-advocacy. I have seen videos or speeches from people where they are basically spending the whole time assigning blame. This is who, who made me upset. This is who caused my meltdowns. And they all need to change. And this is exactly how they need to change. Here's my 10 point plan for how you need to change so I can feel better and belong more. Now again, I'm not saying society doesn't have work. It has a buttload of work. But who is going to model the change for them? Are you going to sit back and say, you need to do all the work, and I'll sit here and tell you if you're doing it right or not. But you need to do the work. You need to change. I just need to sit here and be the dictator of sorts and call you out on whether you are doing the change correctly or not. All the while, I do nothing to improve myself. Now, not everybody falls into the all or nothing camp. I'm privileged to know a lot of people that are doing the internal work. They're doing their part of the change. They are being the change they want to see. And yeah, that's the hard stuff. It's easy to pick up a bullhorn and start telling everybody else where they're getting it wrong and how they need to improve things. A lot of us were raised by people like that. How did that work? Not very well. So if you really want to see the change, you can't simply demand other people do it while you continue to be the same old you that is reactive and pushing buttons and maybe blaming it on your diagnosis or blaming it on society when the reality is you're sitting on a mountain of untapped and undeveloped potential that you're hiding behind and you're using blame to hide yourself. If you really want to move the needle and change things, it's important to take a look at your own nervous system. Where do you have the capability to step in and deliberately apply a strategy that allows you to regulate your emotions much more effectively? And here's the key, regardless of what's happening around you. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go out of your way to throw yourself into harm's way just to prove how skilled you are there are still going to be situations where you feel overwhelmed. There are you know, a, a wedding, drawing a blank here, talking too fast for my working memory. When you go to a wedding reception, I love to dance, or at least I did when my legs worked, but it's an overwhelming experience and I'm going to need to take breaks. I'm going to need to take some extra steps 
to manage my own stress response, my own emotions, I can't stand up and say, before we begin, I'm a self-advocate and I would like to declare this a sensory friendly reception and therefore you all need to keep it down. That's not going to happen. But what can you do to modulate things in your own nervous system? What kind of internal strategies do you have available so you can be far more engaged in the world as it is? There's this thing that I learned when I was going uh, through my social work degree, and that is begin where the client is. If they're believing something that is very self-destructive, well, that's what they believe. I'm not saying we want to encourage that belief or that we want to say, that's a bad belief. You need to change that. But we need to begin by understanding this is this person's point of reference. This is their reality. And I need to honor and respect that this is how they're thinking about things. And I need to explore with them what kind of options they allow themselves for feeling and being different. So society is the same thing. Society is what you want to change. So you think this is where society is. I understand the rules. I understand maybe if I do the work to understand why these rules exist and who is better off because these rules exist. Look at the rules in the tax code. They sure as heck do not reward the workers. They reward the elites. But that's a different conversation. So if you want society to change, you first need to understand how society is, why it is, and what needs are being met by those rules. Then you can come along and say, I have found a different way to get these needs met in a way that I think will work better for both of us. Then you demonstrate, you be that change. You show them how well it can work. And when they experience that, you can win them over into doing it the new way. That's how change happens more often than not. It's not through stomping your feet and holding demonstrations and having lectures. Those are just tantrums. People can tune you out for the length of time you're doing that and then go back onto their lives. It starts small like this with your individual relationships. At least that's how I've been able to do it. I'm sure there are a variety of other ways, but the point being is there's so much that you can do internally to take charge of your experience, whether you get overwhelmed, whether you get anxious, whether you get snippy and lash out at people. There are so many tools at your disposal should you choose to learn them if you first take the personal responsibility for helping create your experience in your own life instead of waiting around for society to do all the work. So I'll leave it with that. And by all means, tell me I'm wrong. Throw something else new into the, the conversation here because it's about having a discussion. That's how we learn about people and what they're afraid of and what they're excited about and what they really need. We've got to talk about it. And then together, we can make a better world for all of us. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. Drop a comment or respond to the email wherever you found this and let me know how this was for you. And until next time, thanks for being you.